Hi friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will discuss a C program in which we will check whether a character given by the user is in uppercase or it is in the lowercase. So let's understand the question. Now, as you know, in English language, we have these alphabet, capital A to capital Z and small a to small Z. And only alphabet can be said in uppercase or lowercase. That means all these capital letters, these are in the uppercase and all these small alphabets, these are in the lowercase. So let's say if we enter a character capital B. So our output should be B is in uppercase. And if we enter a character, let's say small b. So it is in lowercase. So our output should be B is in lowercase. And if we enter any other character other than alphabets, then we should get invalid character. Because in this case, we cannot tell whether this at the rate is in lowercase or uppercase. Because at the rate has only one form. In the same way, if you enter any other character, let's say hash or any digit or let's say curly brackets, then these characters should be treated as invalid character because these are not in uppercase or lowercase. So our program should handle both the cases for the valid cases also and for the invalid cases also. So this is the invalid case. So let's see how we will approach the solution for this question. So as we discussed, these are in the uppercase and these are in the lowercase. So in real life, how do you differentiate between the uppercase and lowercase alphabets? So you will say that this capital A is having greater size than this small a, you know, and this capital B is having greater size. This is larger than this small b. So by seeing the orientation and all this, we as human can differentiate between the uppercase and lowercase. But in C language, how the C compiler will differentiate between them? It should have some method to differentiate between uppercase and lowercase. So we also know that each character in C language has a ASCII value associated with it. So capital A has ASCII value 65, then capital B has 66 and so on. And in the same way, small a has 97, small p has a sky value 98 and so on. So you can say if the sky value of your character is between this range that is 65 to 90, then your character will be in uppercase. And if the sky value of input character is lying between 97 to 122, then your character will be in the lowercase. So that means if you enter a character, then that can be in uppercase or in the lowercase. So that means you have two choices. So you have to decide whether you want to print this answer or this answer. You cannot print both the answer together. That means you cannot say uh, my character is in the uppercase and lowercase both. That means we will use these decision control statements in our approach. So this is the same thing that we have discussed now. So we will input the character. Then we will check whether that character is lying in this range. If yes, then that character is in the uppercase. If that character is not lying in this range, then that will be lowercase. So here I have assumed that user will always input a valid character. That means he will always input alphabet. He will not enter any non-alphabet character like at the rate or hash. So in that way, we have only two choices. We will print uppercase or lowercase only. We will also see how we will handle the invalid case. So this is the flowchart for the approach that we have just discussed. So here I have assumed that user will always input a valid character. So for example, he will always enter a alphabet. He will not enter a non-alphabet. In the next flowchart, we will see how to handle the invalid input also. So here I have taken a ch variable which will store our character. So I have set input ch. Then I am checking whether my character is lying in this range that is capital A to capital Z. So if it is greater than A, that is this side and it is lesser than this Z. That means this side and I have also included this capital A and capital Z. So I have used equal to because user can enter also capital A in that case also this should be valid. So that means if the character which is stored inside this CH is lying between capital A to capital Z that means this condition will be true. So we will come to this part and we will say that particular CH is in uppercase and we will stop. And let's say if we enter a small case character, let's say a small p, then this small p is in lowercase. That means we should come to this path. So this ch is storing p. So I will check whether p is greater than a and it is lesser than capital Z. So the sky value of p, which is actually compared here. So sky value of p will be between this 97 to 122 range. So let's say this will be, let's say, 
102. For example, 102. But you can just check in the SKI table what is the actual SKI value of P. So this is for sure that SKI value of small p will be in the range of small a to small z. So let's say a small p has SKI value 102 and this capital A and capital Z will also be replaced using their SKI value internally. So the SKI value of capital A is 65 and capital Z has 90. So 102 is greater than 65. It is true. It is greater than this. And 102 is lesser than 90. This is not true. 102 is actually greater than 90. So this end means both this and this should be true. Then only this whole condition will be true. So here this is true, but this is false. So this end will say the total condition will be false because this 102 is not lying within this range. So that means that particular P, that means that 102 will be lying here. So we will just come to here because this whole condition is false. So we will say that CH is in lower case. CH means that P is in lower case. So we will stop here. So the main thing is how we have to write this condition. Now let's see how we will draw the flowchart when user can give invalid input also. That means he can also give at the rate or hash. That means he can enter any non-alphabet also. So in this case, as you can see, there is one more condition that we are checking. So let's see. So actually how this flowchart will be working. So first we will take the character from the user. So here we have take the character and then we will check the condition. If this condition is true, then we will say that character is in uppercase. And if that condition will be false, then we will check another condition and we will say, okay, if it is true, then it will be lowercase. And if it is false, then we will finally say that our character was invalid. Then we are checking the condition whether this CS is in the uppercase or not. So here I have checked whether my CS is lying between capital A to capital Z range. So if it is true, what does it mean? I will come to this path and we will say that CS is in uppercase and I will stop. So for example, if I enter capital B, so in that case, I will say that yes, capital B, that means this CH is greater than A and it is smaller than Z. A sky value of B is lying between this range. So I will say true and then I will say yes, this capital B is in uppercase and I'll stop. Now let's say if I enter a small case, so in that case our output should be CH is in lowercase and how we can come here. So I will go to this path, then false, then I will come to this path. That means I should take this path, right? Now let's see how we can take this path. So here CH is storing B. I will check is small b is lying between capital A to capital Z. So capital A to capital Z has this sky value and small b has a sky value 98. So we can clearly see the sky value of small b is lying between this range. So here this small b which is having a sky value 98, it will not be lying between 65 to 90. So this small b which is having a sky value 98, it is greater than 65 but it is not lesser than 90. That means this is true but this is false. So and says that if both the condition are true then only I will be true. But here this is false. So this total will be false. So I will come to this path. So here two choices are my character can be in lowercase or it can be invalid. So here I am checking again the condition. Okay, my character can be in the lowercase. So I am checking whether my CS is lying between small a to small z. So here a small b which is having a sky value 65. So 65 will be lying in the range of small a to small z. Yes. So it will be true. So I will come to this path. So I came from this path then this path. And now I can finally say that my cs is in lowercase. So I check cs is not uppercase. So I come to here then I check if it is lowercase. I say yes it is lowercase and then I stop. And let's say if I enter CH as let's say at the rate. So you know SKI value of at the rate will not be lying between uppercase and lowercase. So we'll come to this path. And again this at the rate SKI value is not lying between this range. So I will come to this false path. So I come from here to here. So I will say that my character is invalid character. This is not a lowercase. This is not a uppercase. This is something other than alphabet. So if I relate this with the C programming, I can say 
this will be checking using the if so if is true then i will be coming to this path and if it is false that means i will come to else path and inside else i will again be checking this condition so if this is true that means this will be the body of if and this will be the body of else so now let's see the program for our both the approaches so let's first make the program using nested if else so here i have written the basic structure of the c program I have included the header file as as so that I can use printf and scanf in my C program. Now I have written the main function. So first we will take a input from the user. So as I am taking a character, so I will take a character variable and then I will enter the value inside this character variable. And after that, I will be checking whether this character is uppercase, lowercase. So let's first print the message that print F, enter a character now i will scan the value using percentile c as ch is a character variable now i will use if else so i will say if i will write the condition here and then if if condition is false then i will come to the else block now we have to write some condition inside if and if that condition will be true then we will come to the if block and i will say that my character is in uppercase and if not then I will come to the else block and I will say that my character is in the lowercase. So here I have written the condition inside if that if my character is between capital A to capital Z, then my character will be in uppercase. And if it is not, then I will come to the else block and I will say my character will be in the lowercase. So here I have used the logical end operator, which says that my character should strictly between the range of capital A to capital Z. And equal to is used because I can enter capital A also and capital Z also. So let's run this program. So let's say I enter a character capital B. So capital B is in uppercase. This is correct. And now let's say if I enter small b, so small b is in lowercase. So my output is correct. And let's say if I enter any other character, let's say at the rate. So in that case, it is saying at the rate is in lowercase, which is actually not correct. So in this example, I have assumed that user will always enter a valid case that is he will not enter this at the rate or any digit. So in that case, this program will work fine. But it is a good practice that we should handle all the invalid case in our program. Because in real life, as a programmer, you should know that what can be the invalid input which can be given by your user or by your client. Now, before moving further, I just want to tell you, you can replace this capital A and capital Z with the sky values. That means you can replace capital A with 65 and capital Z with 90. Because internally, the C compiler uses the sky value of capital A and capital Z. So we can directly use this sky value in our program also. So if I enter, let's say capital B, so capital B is in uppercase. So now let's see how we can handle the invalid input cases also. So why we are getting lower case for invalid cases? It is because this at the rate will not satisfy this condition because the sky value of at the rate will not be lying between 65 to 90. So this if will be false. So we will directly jump to else block. So if any character is not in uppercase, then our program is just saying that come to else block and print it as lowercase. So that's why at the rate is treated as in lowercase. Now let's see how we will handle the invalid input cases correctly. So as we discussed, this if block is okay because it is checking whether my character is in uppercase. But when we are coming to else block, then we have two choices. Our character can be in lowercase or it can be invalid input also. So as we discussed in our flowchart also, we have to use here again if and else. So see here I have used if and else. So inside if I am printing that it is in lowercase and inside else I am saying that my character is invalid input. Now, what should be the condition inside if? So, as we discussed in our flowchart, we should write the condition for the lowercase. So, this is the condition for the lowercase form. If my character is between the small a to small z range, then that will be lowercase. And if it is false, then I will come to else block and I will say it is invalid input. And again, instead of these characters, I can replace them with their sky value 97 and 122. So if any invalid input is coming, so let's say at the rate is coming. So this if will be false, I will come here again at the rate will be checked with this condition again 
the SKI value of at the rate will not be lying between this range. So I will come to else and I will say invalid input and I will then come out of this else block and I will say return zero. So let's run it. So let's say if I enter capital B, so this is correct. If I enter small b, it is in lower case. If I enter at the rate, so invalid input. That means my program is working fine. And if I enter, let's say some digit, so again, it is invalid input because this digit is not in uppercase or lowercase. Now there is one another method also using else if to make this program. And how we can do this? We can just use this else and if together and we can write else if. So this is the program using else if. So what I have done is I have not touched this condition. Now here I have used else if and with this lowercase condition. And here this is the last else. So if my character is in uppercase, so I will come to this if and it will be true. I will say it is in uppercase and then I will leave else if and else I will just come to return zero. If it is in lowercase, so this if will be false. I will come to else if again check this condition. This will be true. So I will say lowercase and then I will come out. And if it is invalid input, so this condition will be false. This else if will also be false. I will come to else and I will just print invalid input. So if I enter capital B for this, so it is in uppercase or small b, it is in lowercase. And if I enter, let's say at the rate, so it is invalid input. That means all the cases are working fine with this program. So finally, now it's time for the bonus tip. So the tip is instead of manually checking whether your character is in capital A to capital Z or small a to small Z range, you can just use the is upper and is lower function. So both these functions are actually the inbuilt library functions which are already present inside C language. And both these functions actually do the same work that you were manually doing. This function accepts a integer parameter and it returns an integer value. So it will actually accept a character and that character will actually be converted to the sky value. Then this is upper function will accept that character. So this function will check that character is uppercase or not. So if the character is in uppercase then this function returns a value greater than 0 and this value can be any value like 1, 2 and so on depending on your compiler and if the past character is not in uppercase then this function simply returns 0. In similar manner is lower function checks whether the character that is passed to it is in lowercase or not. So if the past character is in lowercase then this function also returns a value greater than 0 and if that character is not in lowercase then it simply returns 0 as uppercase was returning. So let's see how we will make the program using both these functions. So inside if we are checking for the uppercase and inside this else if we are checking for the lowercase and invalid input case is similar as previous. So inside if this is upper function is accepting a parameter. So let's say this ch is actually a uppercase character, let's say capital A. So in that case, this is upper function will return a value greater than 0. So let's say it returns 2. So 2 is greater than 0. So this condition will be true. So in that case, we will print that character is in the uppercase. And if that character is actually lowercase, then this function will actually return 0. And 0 is not greater than 0. So this condition will be false. So we will come to else if and here as the character is actually lowercase. So this is lower function will returns a value greater than zero. So that value will be actually greater than zero. So this condition will be true in that case. So we will say that ch is in the lower case. And let's say we entered some non alphabet, for example, hash, then in that case, hash character is actually an invalid input. So this if condition will be false because that will not be a uppercase. Again, this is lower function will also return zero and this else if will be false. So we will finally come to else and we will simply print invalid input. So how do these function actually works? So internally, these function also checks whether your character is between capital A to capital Z and so on. And accordingly, they returns the value zero or non zero value. So I hope you have understood all the approaches that we have discussed. So if you have any comment, query or suggestion, please write down in the comment box. And if you want to practice more such C language programs, you can check my playlist practice programs in C language on my channel. You can also find one playlist in which I have covered the C language from beginning to end. So if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for further notifications. See you in the next video. Goodbye.